now. Let's take a deeper step. How does anointing overflow? Anointing uh, could be called heavenly electricity. And anointing behaves like heat. Um, just trying to teach you a, a little bit of physics. And so heat can be transferred from one point to another three ways. Just like electricity. The first way anointing can therefore move from the anointer to the anointed is one by a process called conduction, if we are using scientific term. It simply means by direct contact. Direct contact. In Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 45, Mark 1, 40 to 45, when a leper came to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, hey, I know you can make me clean. Jesus touched him. And the anointing to kill, kill the leprosy, and the man was cleansed. In John chapter 9, and I think this is a very beautiful one, John chapter 9 from verse 1 to 7, when there was a man who was born blind, the Bible said Jesus spat on the ground and made some mud out of it. That's John chapter 9 from verse 1 to 7. And anointed his eyes with mud. The mud, putting the mud on his eyes, the Bible calls it anointing his eyes. And then, of course, you know the rest of the story. It wasn't long after that that the man began to say, I was blind, now I see. So anointing can be transferred by direct contact. Hands laid on you. Anointing can be transferred the second way called convection. In other words, anointing can be transferred into a material and then the material can now come to you carrying the anointing. For example, in 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15, 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15, Elisha, God, the anointing of Elijah, when he grabbed the mantle that fell from him. In Acts chapter 19, from verse 11 to 12, Acts 19, from verse 11 to 12, the Bible tells us God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul because from his body aprons and handkerchiefs were taken to those who were sick and they were healed and the demons left those who were possessed. The handkerchiefs, the aprons carried anointing from Paul to where the anointing was needed. That is another way of transferring anointing from something that has come in contact with the anointer to the one who needs to be anointed. And then there is a third way which is probably the most powerful of them all. It is called radiation. It means the anointing starts from the anointer. 
it jumps through space and lands on the one to be anointed. Anointing can jump, you know. When you say, oh, there's a fire, and it was called by a spark of electricity. Power jumps over space to go and start a fire. In Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says God sent his word and he healed them. Did they have to lay hands? Did they have to send a piece of cloth? Just speak a word. That's why in Matthew chapter 8 verse 5 to 13, Matthew 8 from verse 5 to 13, the centurion said, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak a word and my servant will be healed. Send the anointing. Don't bother coming. In Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10 from verse 46 to 52, the Bible tells us that when Bartimaeus cried to Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And finally they brought him and Jesus said, what do you want? He said, I just want to receive my sight. He didn't touch him. He didn't say, okay, take my handkerchief. He simply said, receive your sight. And instantly, he got his sight back. You see, in Second Kings chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14, Second Kings 5 from verse 1 to 14, Naaman was expecting anointing by contact, by conduction. He said, I thought this prophet would come out. Lay his hand on me and call on his God and cure me of my leprosy. But unknown to him, anointing had already gone from the mouth of Elisha into River Jordan. By the time he got to River Jordan, anointing was waiting in the river. <laughs> in the name of the one who sent me. I am sending anointing to you today. Amen. Receive it for your healing. Amen. Receive it for your deliverance. Amen. Receive it for your breakthrough. Amen. 